And Charlie, back to you. Matt, can you imagine a time where you get your weather forecast from a, from a bit of DNA? Oh, no. It's going to happen. That'd be me out of a job, wouldn't it? No, 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 no. You'll get all the information rather than from loads of computers. Oh, it'll be from a bit, little bit of DNA. Straight into me. It could be. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it can be injected into you. We're going to find out, actually. But okay. it's a whole new scientific concept. I'm watching. It's interesting, I think. So, the explainer is DNA. We understand that it's important to human health, but now scientists think it could be used to solve other global problems. For example, data storage. Yeah, it, it could sound odd, but you know all the videos and photographs we collect and we store on computers? Instead of that, or in some cloud, it could be stored in the form of DNA, saving huge amounts of space, which is why I was saying that Matt perhaps could be getting all his weather information from that. Um, our science correspondent, Richard Westcott, is going to explain more, but here's how it all works. We're producing data at a staggering rate. All those videos, social media posts, online forms, and look where I am, selfies. The problem is, it takes a huge amount of computer space and energy to store it all. So could the answer lie somewhere else, somewhere deep inside us all? I couldn't resist making a video of this beautiful replica of the famous Watson and Crick double helix, their model of DNA that changed the world. But what if we could actually store the video I'm making now onto a piece of DNA? We take the, the, the movie file you sent me, which on a computer is zeros and ones, and we convert that into A's, C's, G's and T's. Cambridge mathematician Nick Goldman has devised a way of turning computer code into DNA code. It means you can use the DNA as a kind of hard drive. Tell us about the day when you came up with the idea. The day was uh, a big meeting discussing how we were going to keep on storing large amounts of information coming from experiments on DNA. We went to the bar and started talking about other ways we might store the information. Uh, and in a light bulb moment, we realised that the DNA we'd been worrying about was itself a way of storing information. An American company turns Nick's code into physical DNA. It's a secret process, but they told us why it's so effective. So the, the, the first huge benefit of DNA is that it's extremely dense. Uh, you, if you restore all the data that is uh, on the internet in DNA, that will be the size of a shoebox. Uh, and then the, the second main benefit of DNA is that it's uh, permanent. Uh, you could store it forever, um, <clears throat> which is very different from uh, a, an electronic media, which uh, ages very rapidly. Back at the Wellcome Sanger Institute in Cambridge, they're world leaders in reading DNA. These machines are scanning the code of everything from human beings to diseases like dysentery. And something's just arrived for us in the post. So this is what comes back from America. This is your report stored on DNA. Where is it? It's just <laughs> there. The big question then, did it work? Could you read my video back? We uh, put the file back together again. Uh, and it's this file here, and it looks like this. That looks exactly... I mean, doesn't look like there's any errors in it at all. No. Like and we checked, and it's a perfect copy of the file. Every single zero, every single one is correctly reproduced. Big companies, including Microsoft, are also looking at DNA storage. It's still too expensive and too slow, but that could soon change. In five years, it will be advanced enough that if you've got a lot of money and very valuable information, you might think about going this way. And maybe 10 to 15 years before there's a product that you and I would buy for our personal use. Richard Westcott, BBC News, talking to you from a piece of DNA. So, Richard, I've got a couple of uh, initial thoughts. One is, I like the idea that good ideas come out of the pub. Yes. Which was yeah, referenced. It's very common, that, in science, no. I've noticed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing we can all grasp. Yeah. Some of the other things are a bit harder. Just clarify, this is not something that we will have within our own DNA. It's not part of our makeup. We no. won't be carrying the information in our own cells. No, it's not human DNA. So if you think of DNA as an instruction manual, and your body uses it to build cells, the proteins look at it and work out how to build a cell and go off and build a cell, it's the instruction manual and 
everything that's living uses DNA to, as an instruction manual on how to build itself, like bacteria and diseases and, you know, animals and human beings and so on. So it's the instruction manual that they are recreating, effectively writing in a lab in America. So DNA is made up of four molecules and basically if you put them in certain orders, these base pairs, they call them, then, then you can sort of write instructions effectively. And what they've been able to do is to turn computer code zeros and ones into DNA code, A, C, G and T, these four molecules, uh, and effectively make their own, write their own DNA. It's not living, it's not from inside a person, but it's still DNA. Uh, I apologise, it still kind of feels kind of over here in, in terms of trying to grasp the concept, but this is something that's been picked up by big companies who see this as the future, or potentially the future. They do. I mean, they are looking for something to replace kind of computer storage because, I mean, you have to, you saw the big data centre, I was, I was walking around there with my mobile phone. Well, that's constantly gobbling up electricity because they've got to keep it all cool and it takes up a lot of space as well and actually this idea came out of them trying to work out how to get more computer space in that room. So. They're storing DNA data on those computers and they kind of had that moment in the pub, like you say, when they said, actually, maybe we could use the DNA. The big difference, though, is that you can fit so much onto DNA and they are saying you could get all of the world's data at the moment onto DNA that would fit inside the back of an SUV or a van. So Which Microsoft is, is going to be is helping with development of this, is it? There's lots of people looking at it sort of separately and they had a big meeting a couple of weeks ago in America where they all started to swap ideas So people have been toying with this for a few years but they're starting to sort of build momentum now to see how each other is getting on. Yeah. I lose everything all the time, so the thought of everything being in such a tiny thing, that's even worse, it just gets worse and worse. Yeah, they'll have to have a little bit of DNA, but a great big box. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it's like it's a big sign on it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on your desk to reassure you. Thank you very it's much. It's perhaps a lot to grasp this morning, but it's, it's the sign of the time.